The most coveted role in Smite is undoubtedly that of support. If you're lucky enough to be first pick, go ahead and lock in your favourite. But with great CC comes great responsibility. You're the puppet master of your team. Victory hinges upon your actions. Smite is a game that changes as quickly as Aphrodite's affections, so I wouldn't labour item choice too intensively. That said, current guardian itemisation is so intrinsic to the support role it's definitely worth mentioning. At present, there's two options for support starting items. Both include Watcher's Gift and Hog Level 1. Do not start Boots. Do not start Hog Level 2. Your choice is between 2 wards, 5 multi potions, or 2 wards, 3 health, and 3 mana. Even Kumbakarna isn't big enough to carry 3 consumables. In order to accommodate the second option, fling down the wards, one at mid camps and one at the enemy blue, before porting back and getting your potion on. From here, your three main goals in life are Midas Boots, Hog Level 3 and Wards. For itemisation tips to follow up this supporting holy trinity of items, check out the God section of Smite Guru. Remember to use that brain thing though. Glue a finger to the tab key to ensure you aren't stacking magical resist versus a physical orgy. Be sure to sell Midas late game to get your booties of choice. And by choice I mean cooldown booties or cooldown booties. When warding at the start, be quick. If you take your time, you could give the enemy team an easy first blood. Once your pockets are filled with potions, your actions depend on the map's orientation. If the long lane, your lane, is to the right, you will solo blue while your ADC has a foursome at mid harpies. If it's safe, try to let your ADC get the last hit. If you catch the slightest hint of a steal, don't hesitate to put the blue in the ground yourself. If dual lane is on the left, you will double team blue. You can use Hog in the buff or in the minion wave, depending on your level of comfort. If there's good communication between you and your ADC partner, go ahead and save it for the minion wave for a chance at first blood. In lane is where you put all those potions to good use. Be sure to use your skills to soften the wave so your ADC can plink the last hits. ADC mains are notoriously high maintenance. Be sure to spoon feed yours. Many supports have skills that can both soften minions and harass at the same time. For example, Gebs 2 can hit the whole wave and both foes if you position yourself to the side of the wave. It's important to remember that you aren't invulnerable. A good duo will take advantage of a support low in pots and high in Rambo. Coming up to the 3 minute mark, you want to rotate and get the mid harpies with whoever is there. Try to tag the minion wave with a skill before you set off, so you get benefits on the move. Mids are important, but they aren't worth losing your life for. If for some reason your jungle and mid are otherwise engaged, don't fling your life away pointlessly. Remember, there are mids on both sides. From this point on, you're no longer married to your ADC. You're married to your whole team, you big supporty slut. Rotate for harpies, help the jungler with buffs, facilitate ganks, and generally be a great guy. Having a long distance relationship with your ADC helps them too. It gives them solo farm, potentially giving them a big lead in the enemy, especially if the opposing support has attachment issues. It's rarely optimal to rotate all the way to solo. And don't make your ADC miss you too much. Come back to soak up minion corpses and help them stay warded. Many people think that a support should die for the team. I think this is false. A good support should soak up damage, doing their job, but know their limits and get out still alive. Now, as with most things in Smite, it's situational. If you're very sure that your sacrifice will save someone, go for it. But if on the other hand it seems most likely that you'll both end up dead, don't be a blind hero. Supporting skill is definitely related to a low death count. As for team fighting, there's lots of things to consider. Are you Geb? Do you have Blink Out? Are you Sobek looking for a pick? To peel or not to peel? That's the question. Should you CC the enemy assassin, trying to get physical with your Artemis? Or do you disrupt their backline? Don't be a predictable one-trick Guan Yu pony. If your last attempt at Blink Frost Breath was met with an Odin slash Zeus combo, don't be so keen to put your neck through the same noose. Last but not least, let's talk about stealing objectives. Risk and reward is key in Smite, and the concept applies greatly to stealing objectives. The fact that you're the one being told to steal usually implies that the enemy team is in the dominant position. Are they simply baiting another fight they're sure to win? How many of your team are dead? How many phoenixes do you have? Do you have blink? How much vision do you have? Do you have any vision? You get the point. There are many factors to consider. I'm not saying never attempt to steal or contest an objective. I'm just advising against blindly trying to steal every time. If the reward outweighs the risk and the conditions are fairly favourable, go for it. 
I've been Plague Player, and that's enough of me for one day. I hope you've enjoyed the video. You'll surely be a master support main in no time. Feel free to stick to this guide as much or as little as you want, and if you've got any supporting tips, whack them in the comments so we can all benefit. Learning's fun. Till next time, VVGB.